Hi everyone, in today's video, we will be talking about the investment savings equilibrium. It is also known as your IS function or your IS curve. Now, this is a very important video because uh, you'll be using the IS curve in line with your LM function or LM curve. Okay, So the IS curve and the LM curve obviously will come together to form what we call the IS-LM model, um, which is pretty much the core focus on um, macroeconomics. Okay, So this is a very important video. Um, you know, I would suggest that you take down as many notes as you can. So, what is the IS curve? Well, basically, the IS curve is a curve that shows all the equilibrium points in the goods market. So, when I say the goods market, I'm actually referring to demand for consumption, uh, for investment goods, for government spending, etc. Okay, so that's what I meant by the goods market. And this curve has got interest rates as the vertical axis and it has got the income level as the horizontal axis. So I suppose that was really easy to understand. Um, let's look at the graphical derivation of the IS curve. Okay, Before we go into that, just let me show you that the IS curve is actually a downward sloping curve on the interest rates versus income graph. Okay, So what we're going to need to derive this using graphs is the Keynesian cross diagram. Well, I hope you remember what this is. So the Keynesian cross diagram has got aggregate expenditure on the vertical axis and it's got income on the horizontal axis. Okay, so that is how you're going to derive your IS curve, which again is a curve that is drawn on a graph with interest rates against uh, the income level. And basically what you need to do is to change the level of interest rates to see the change in the income level so that you can actually see the IS curve. So you might be asking, why do we need to analyze interest? Well, that's because we previously discussed that the difference between macroeconomics and microeconomics is that money plays a big, big part of this story, right? Um, when there's lending and borrowing activities going on, um, you have to fall back on the interest rates to talk about the demand and supply of money, uh, of what, or what economists like to call loanable funds. Okay, so we're going to begin by drawing the Keynesian cross diagram and giving it an initial equilibrium. Okay, so I've got my 45 degree line there. I've got an initial AE curve of AE0. Now, take note that the interest level is I0, okay, and the amount of autonomous expenditure here is A bar. It is very important for you to take note of the interest level at this point. So just below of the Keynesian cross diagram, I'm going to draw a space for my ISLM curve to be drawn on. So since the horizontal axis is income as well, I can mark out where is Y0. So the interest rates level initially is at I0. Therefore, I can say that point A over here is one of the points on the IS curve. Okay, So point A is one of the many equilibrium points of the goods market on the IS curve. Now you might be wondering why I'm using I for interest rates and not R. Okay, R here stands for the real interest rate. So why am I using nominal instead of real? Well, that's because I assume that um, prices are fixed and that inflation is equal to zero. So if I to write out the equation for the nominal interest rates, which is um, the real interest rates plus the inflation rate, which is zero, then I'm going to get I equals to R. So the nominal interest rate here is the same as the real interest rate. So there's really no difference using I or R. Now, remember that I mentioned that we need to change the interest rates to see the change in output. So I'm going to assume that the nominal interest rate is going to fall to I1. So what happens when the interest rates fall? Okay, now, this goes back to your basics. Um, now, we're talking about the goods market here. Okay, So when the interest rates fall, what happens is that your investment is going to rise. Why? Well, that's because there is a negative relationship between interest rates and the amount of investment. Right? We talked about this in the previous videos. So an increase in investment will cause your aggregate expenditure to rise, which also cause an increase in income. So my AE curve is going to shift up just like that, and taking note that the interest level is now changed to I1. Okay, the autonomous expenditure is still the same, so I've got a new point of equilibrium um, in my Keynesian cross diagram. So this is the new goods market equilibrium that is determined by your interest rate and your output level. Okay, so my new equilibrium in the goods market gives me an output of Y1 and the interest rates is now I1. So I'm going to bring that across horizontally to the new level of output so that I can mark out point B. What I'm going to do next is to assume linearity, assume linearity as in a straight line. 
Thanks for watching a sample of the Quickonomics online learning experience. We hope you've enjoyed it. We believe that true happiness lies in realizing ambitions and dreams. That's why we make our products specific to your needs, simple to understand and captivating, so that you can learn effectively while saving time, realizing those ambitions and dreams. The Quickonomics online learning experience is a range of supplementary lectures, tutorials, and exam solutions in the form of videos, which you can conveniently view anytime, anywhere. Watching our videos before and after your regular lessons at school, we aim to give you joy in learning and build academic confidence at the comfort of your own relaxed learning environment. So how can you begin? We welcome you to purchase Quickie Dollars to redeem the videos for full access to the Quickonomics online learning experience. Thank you for starting with Quickonomics.